Hey there, Alan Matthews here, and in this video, I'm going to start to tell you about arpeggios. Now, individual arpeggios, well, there are a bunch more videos about arpeggios, but this is basically your orientation to arpeggios. What they are, why we do them, what's going on with them. This is kind of the, this, well, it's your orientation to arpeggios. So I hope that you sit down, buckle in, get ready for a long haul because a ton of what we do on the classical guitar has to do with arpeggios. It informs everything. It's, it's a lot. So please sit down, get comfortable. Let's dive into arpeggios. All right, well, let's get into some arpeggios then. So the meat of the conversation, arpeggios. Why arpeggios? What are we doing? What even are they? To start off with, let's just talk about what they are and then why we would possibly put all of this time into studying them and practicing them as some individual esoteric little study. And the reason is this. An arpeggio is a broken chord. So I'm just gonna play a big E chord. Ta-da! That's a strum went through the strings. On our arpeggio is whenever we break up the chord and we still have the same chord down here, but then we just play the notes individually. It could be, I just did that all with my thumb. That's an arpeggio. Anytime you actually just have a chord, chord tones, and you're not playing them as a chunk or a strum, but you're actually individually playing the notes, that's an arpeggio. Now, the way that the hand is designed, the right hand, was specifically designed to play classical guitar. Not many people know this, but this was originally why the hand was built in this way, was to fit this instrument. And that is that when we come down and put it, then the fingers, when we curve them, they basically become flat like this. And what that does is we could just put them right onto the strings and then it's very easy for us then to play individual strings with the, uh, with the fingers and the thumb. And so this is why, this is why out of the primordial ooze, we were designed this way so that we could all be classical guitarists. So we might as well make good use of this. And notice that the hand is really well designed for arpeggios because we can put different fingers on different strings and play them individually. And so that's why arpeggios make up probably 75% of everything we do on the classical guitar. It's probably, I'm guessing at these ratios, if we took all of the literature and all of everything that we do into, into account, probably 75% arpeggios, another 27%, um, that doesn't make any sense, another 22% uh, scale work, things like that, and then another couple of percentages as um, special techniques like harmonics and tamburas and, and strums and things like that. But it, by and large, we play arpeggios. That's what we do as classical guitarists. Um, a couple of examples really common. This is an arpeggio. Um, what would be another one? There's tons of different etudes uh, for them. Brower six. There's anyway. There's there's so many pieces in almost every piece that you are playing. It is chock full of arpeggios, and so it's a large part of what we do. It doesn't take you don't have to look very far to find them. Is the point. So if you'll notice in this series of, of videos, there's a ton of videos on arpeggios, and the way that they're laid out is this right here. There are a core number of arpeggios that kind of inform. They're like word letter combinations, like TH together in the English language, TH, CH, SH. These kind of these are go together. So if you if you can master TH or SH and CH, then all of a sudden it makes your, re your reading much, much easier. And these are, are the way that arpeggios work as well. So these, these nine that are presented in these videos, these nine different ones, you can extract those and combine them with, with basic alternation. And all of a sudden you get pretty much any arpeggio you could possibly find out of these core groups, this core group of arpeggios here. So that's why 
there are all of these videos on these specific little arpeggios. It's why, you know, you can spend tons of time just on P-I-M. P-I-M-A, if you don't know this, P is the thumb, I, index, middle is the middle, and uh, A is the annular ring finger. So, so there's that. So the reason that we are putting all of this time into arpeggios is because it's so much of what we do, basically. A couple of things to remember as you go through these videos one at a time. Number one, please be patient. Please go slow. Really look at the individual steps that go into each one, into each arpeggio, and master each step as like a robot. Really quick movements from one to the next so that you know there's this movement, then this movement, there's this movement. You'll totally understand what I'm talking about when you actually start going through the, the, the videos, but I just want to really encourage you not to round the corners and just make them into a Yes, that's the, that's the goal. Um, these type of things, yes, we want it to be round, we want it to just flow, but you can't do that unless you have each individual step mastered along the way. Just like you can't speak fluidly and fluently if you can't articulate each word separately as well. You have to, don't actually know the words. So please just take your time, be patient, and really pay attention to detail because that's what it's all about. Whenever we're talking about fundamentals and really uh, core basic cells of, of movements and arpeggios, this is what we're talking about. Please be very patient on it. Okay, moving right along. A couple of things to remember. Just to recap back from the fundamentals and the basic concepts, you want to stay in alignment. You always want to be shooting for the elbow. I say shooting for the elbow. Basically, when, when you're closing your hand, you want it to be in line with your elbow as opposed to like this, right? We don't want to do it like this, clawing at it like this. We want to actually be straight. So we want to keep good alignment. You want to keep your wrist out a little bit. And you want to close your hand and you want your knuckles, middle knuckles, to move into the hand whenever you're doing all these. Every single video that is to come on the arpeggios will tell you this again, but I just want to really harp on it because it is really important. Okay, in another video, there will be some practice progressions and things that you can do to make your arpeggio practice much more interesting, much more beautiful, much more musical, and there'll be other ideas as well, how to expand on them, how to speed them up, different things to do with them so that they become more, more useful, varied, and more, um, more like the, the music that you will actually be playing in pieces of, of music. And so there's all of that to come. So there you go. Now you are ready to embark on your journey into arpeggio land in earnest. So please keep in mind all these things and let's progress. Let's go forward. Let's move it up to the next level and get started on our pageos. See you in the next video. Adios.